Hello, welcome back to the channel today. I'm joined by Coach Ryan Baker, and we are literally going to talk about one of my uh, my favourite things, which is um, complimentary plays. And uh, I've been a big fan of Ryan's usage of his, of his orbit motion, and he's going to today going to join us today to talk about a few tips of if his offence running the uh, orbit motion as a complement to his offence. So uh, welcome to the, the channel, Coach Ryan. Thanks, Coach. Uh, and we are going to talk about um, orbit motion and how you use it. So, uh, yep. Of course, before we go into the clips, I've got, I've got a couple of couple of nasty questions because I, I am a nasty <laughs> person. All right? Is um, what made you choose orbit as your uh, as your chosen weapon of choice, so to speak? Why did you go for orbit orbit yet or other options? So, in terms of like orbit versus jet, I always preferred it just because it gave you a little bit more room for error. So, as you'll probably see, but I, on my orbit stuff, I like to do various things off it. So we'll run, uh, we'll run the swing screen. So we'll just have everyone block in and just dump it into the flats and block it up. So we can run a swing screen. We'll run um, a jet motion off it. So like um, a sweep off it. Um, and again, I just feel that that giving that a little bit more depth helps people at our level be a little bit more comfortable in hitting that jet. Um, the closer they get to the line of scrimmage, in my opinion, they start to get a bit more shaky, certainly the newer guys to it. Um, so that, that always just kind of let them see green grass. So it was a bit of a mentality thing as well as kind of philosophy. The philosophy. Um, we run a lot of fake off it. We run, we'll fake it inside zone, we'll fake it, we'll fake a swing screen and throw slants behind it, stuff like that. So it was just to kind of force the defence to play down deeper into the flats almost um, and force the corners to come up, force the outside linebackers to kind of scrape to the edges. Um, and I just felt that that gave the defence a little bit more eye candy because they could see it more, so they had to communicate more. Whereas Jet, because of the nature of it, is a little bit faster. They can sometimes just get caught. They can get caught in the right place by not reacting. Um, so a lot of it was just based on on our level, not for any, any that, reason. I just think that it works better at our level. Now, did you did you ever use like all like the motion to um, see if they declare whether they're in man or in zone, or, would, or did you not go that into uh, into that depth of it when you're trying to you know worry about what what defense are running? We definitely did a little bit in terms of what we would term exposure motion. So we would just run a motion on like a run play. So we'd look an inside dive just to see what the coverage was doing. Yeah. Um, so as we went through, certainly early on, motion played heavily on the start of drives. So we could see whether they were playing man or zone and then kind of work our pass schemes off the back of that. Um, but yeah, there's we've, we've run it in all kinds of occasions really to get a look at what the defense are doing if we know that their defense is particularly going to bite on something, if they've seen us do it week in, week out, then we'll add a wrinkle off it. Yeah, so if, would you start Would you start off like, like we did with, with it in, in the past? Would you start off with maybe one or two things and then as the season goes on, add, add more to that arsenal, so to speak? Would you like, or would you throw it all out there from day one or would you, like, and then just weapon of choice on the day or, or would you sprinkle it in bit by bit? No, so we, we very much like did our install bit by bit. So, as stupid as it sounds, practice one on the orbit would just be, well, it's not what we called orbit, we called it push from our H. So, our H back, we call it push, and from our Z, we'd call it zoom. Um, practice one of running this was just run it without anything. So, we would just line the QB up and we'd just have them run. And it was a way of kind of warming them up. So, the start of practice as we're kind of getting them loose, just so that we could get the depth stuff like that then the kind of end of that practice we'd start to incorporate some of that into some of our pass game concepts some of our run game concepts but not have it factor it was just there to rep the, the orbit motion um, week week two we would then maybe look at okay let's add it in now into our passing concepts so now we can build it into the qb's read progression um, and i know we spoke about this previously but i ran a lot of um split concept stuff so it by the very nature of split concept it didn't really give me much in the way of three by one 
and this was my way of getting like a third receiver to one side so I could run that kind of triangle read concept with something in the flat, something into the linebackers and something outside. So we'd add it, like practice two, we'd add it into that. Um, practice three, we'd probably do it from some different formations just to kind of do the same thing, but from different starting spots. And then practice four, we'd maybe do like a handoff and then kind of rotate that through. So back to, so we do that with H, do that with Z, um, incorporate it into our pass game, run game, just kind of drip feed it. But the guys were very much used to that because that's the way we built our playbook and built our install anyway. It was literally, right, today's slants. Next week, it's slants and hitches. Next week, it's hitches and seams. They, they were very used to that. So we just added on bit by bit to it. Um, you touched you touch on early about, about, our, about our level of our game. Um, yeah. What are your thoughts on on motion uh, it, to be using that in this country? You know, do you think it's a, a good aid? Complementary players? Do you think it's a good aid in general? I mean, I mean, uh, if you're a, if you're like a young offensive coordinator or a new offensive coordinator, do you think having that jet? In my opinion, I've always valued said jet jet or orbit. Is quite cheap in store. You know, it's, it's nothing major to teach, but you know. It, it's effective when you do put it in there, in my opinion. What's your thoughts yep. on, on, on motions and, 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 and the aiding of a couple of plays? Yeah, I mean, I love it. And you've you've probably picked up on the fact that I run it a bunch, um, much to the dismay of my H's and Z's, because they used to be running to the ground some games. Um, but I love it purely because I want to force a defence to communicate. So while we build those complementary plays off it, we've got, you know, various different things we can do from that look. Uh, it's very simplest form. I just want to force the defense to adjust. And I want them talking to each other. I want them panicking. I want them moving around, not knowing where they're going. And I think that's where, certainly as you go up through the ranks, you see that. So, you know, no disrespect to the lower rank, Div 2, the lower end of Div 1. You see that panic creep in, and then as you go further up into the better teams, they're a little bit more disciplined on handling it. Um, but as even those kind of most disciplined teams, they will still pass it off. There'll be communication errors. There'll be breakdowns in it. You'll get guys guessing. So you'll get guys, uh, the blitz is going away from me, so I don't know what to do now. I'm just going to auto blitz. Um, and you can kind of start to create your own situations. So that's why I used it. I used it as a in, in two ways, really. One, to give myself a compliment, complimentary package of plays. And even down to like pre, um, pre-play pre shifts. So I did a lot of shifting and motioning. So what I wanted, certainly from my H back, is I wanted the defense not quite sure whether it was in a shift or in a motion. So it would be a lot of it would be kind of quite slow early on. And we don't know now if he's going to, in that motion, is he going to stop and now become a pro back? Is he going to carry on and run that? Is he going to get the handoff? Um, so yeah, a lot of it for our level, in my opinion, is just kind of forcing the defense to adjust and communicate. And that's when you start to see some of the errors. I can think on the floor, he's definitely a, a, a thing for us at our level. I, I always find yeah. it. Unless, as you say, the higher, the higher you go, the better the defenses are. You know, like, you know, it, it is what it is, but you know, there are some guys that once you do something like that, they are they are in a bit of a bit of trouble. Anyway, and some, um, sometimes it's the other way around. Sometimes the better they are, the more they react to it. Sometimes, like in the lower levels, they'll just they'll be in the right place because they stood still, yeah, not knowing what to do. Yeah, that's also true. That's also true. Um, well, we're going to get into these clips now. I've loaded up probably nine or ten clips. I think it's nine actually. Uh, and all I want you to do is we're going to watch you talk through your process. Um. You know what you do and how you do it. Um, so we'll start. We'll start off with um, the, our first clip of the day. Can you see this? Can you see this? Okay, coach. Yep. Yeah, yeah. 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 So this is just our spread look, two by two. Uh, is this 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 play is pre is pre called right? So you, yep. they, they know you're running. They they know you're running orbit from. The second they line up and and uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. It's not like um, 
You can't be as the as the uh, the sort of super stage you and with Marshall if you want to. No, the only thing we really did with the QB is move the back for protections. Yes. yes. Um, he was, for as great as he was, he was one of the best kind of people at letting you coach and he's not going to outthink you. So, yeah, he he would never really start to motion. He might move slight adjustment to alignments or ask people to go out wider if he wants to hit a certain side or he likes something. Um, and you'll probably see as we go through some of these clips, some of the alignments change, probably just based on him saying, you know, just widen out, tightening, whatever. Um, but no, this this was always this was always called. But what you do one to one time, and then we can talk it through like a time. Cool. So yeah, this is our Z motion. So it's zoom. And it was just that steel play, so it's double slants on the left side, double hitch on the well, not double hitch. Now, I have to ask this question. This this is this is double slants from the get-go, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. The QB's not got the option to hit that. We'll talk about it later, but he's not got the option to throw the ball to the, to the, the getting guy. He is he's just window dressing on this play, correct? No, no, he can it's in his read progression now. Okay. So if the um, outside linebacker stays high on it and the corner goes with the outside. Right. So essentially, if they're in some kind of man look, we'll just dump it off to the flat and try and get to the outside edge. So at this point, because we know we're not we're getting pressure down into the flat, the QB is going to check that off straight away. So once that linebacker, once that linebacker darts in onto your, onto your motion back, then he's going to throw the slant? Yep. Perfect. So that's just one of those kind of if this, then if that. Then, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of scenarios. I've got a question about that, but you already answered it. So that's okay, cool. But um, yeah. what you do one more time? The beauty, this, is, this is now where the complimentary stuff starts. Because once you put that guy in motion, and, and I, you know, I've, I saw you run this in uh, 2019 quite a bit yeah. in, in, in two or three games that I, that I can watch you guys. So I know that you've been on this for a, quite a long time and with other people with various people running it. But so I know that it's one of those. Uh, Aspects of your game that you really put the time into. It's not something yeah. that you would run like once or twice. You're going to run this probably six, seven, ten, twelve times a game, coach. Yeah, and I think that's that has to play a huge factor into your practice planning in terms of your receivers getting used to that amount of running. Yeah. So all, um, all your QB does, for anybody that wants to run this, is that he he signals in with his hand. It could be a foot, could be a hand, could be a helmet, whatever whatever your choice of. Uh, Style you want to do it, he signals in the hand. Now, it, I have to ask the question, coach is mm -hmm. that guy jogging too slow, or is, are you happy with that tempo? So, that, that tempo pre snaps fine, and then we'll look to accelerate at the point of past the QB. Um, that just falls into that. I don't want them knowing whether it's a motion or a shift, yeah. basically. Fair enough. Fair enough. So, that, that tempo early on is fine, and then it should be gear up into full sprint. Um, and this is what I'm talking about, the communication, right? So the corners had to move, the outside linebackers have moved. That motion's now brought the safety down into the flat, which then caused us to go over the top with the slant. Um, so I think, is it 24? Is this, this, they're playing that two shell. Yeah. So the outside linebacker's going to press down hard on it. Well, well, for me, I like this because... You can still run that double slant concept backside regardless, because the, the, the outside slant will be on. Um, but they need to declare to you, they're, they're going to declare what they're going to do once, they, once that guy comes in motion. And that makes the keepers wind up, and I, I, I like the simplicity of that. The keeper is going to know, right, they're going to dart down with the uh, with, with the, the orbiting uh, receiver, I'm going to hit the slant. Uh, and I think that's a, a nice wrinkle and a nice addition to anybody that can do. So if you, if you do run double slants, yeah, and I mean, this is where you've got a savvy quarterback, right? So yeah. we used to talk a lot about moving people with his eyes. Yeah. And if you play that, as you go through, you'll see he kind of looks to the he looks to that motion first. He back, as, if, check, yeah, check off as if we're going to throw that swing and just dump yeah. it off. Um, so that's it's quite good to have a, a savvy QB that's going to yeah. do that and he's able to play with his eyes. So he's just going to look at it and then come over the top. Right, that's the first clip, and then we're going to talk about um, complementary stuff. So again, 
right on the second tip of the day. And this is this is your very second. This is the very next play. Play 42, play 43. This is the next play on the series. You know, I've actually stood at this for a little bit of time. So you know, I, I, did, I did take a little bit of a deep dive into coaching game. And um, one of the things that I've, I've always preached on this channel and on coaching games before is that if I'm going to talk about something, uh, I want to shout us or me running it. And I could have come on here and um, just talked about Ryan's game, but as soon as I reached out to Ryan, he was he was happy to come on and talk about his, about what he does and how he does it. And I, I love that aspect of UK coaches. And the, you know, the more we can do that, you know, I think it's brilliant. And I appreciate Ryan coming on and talking about what he does because we need to be more open and more honest. And um, you know, Ryan has had no problem with me looking through his film, uh, and has had no problem with me uh, talking about his um, talking about his offense. I know in the past I've said in many clips like what you wouldn't need, right? You know, so there's been there's been um, lots of back and forth conversations over over the years, and um, you know it's it's good to get him on and talk talk about it from his own mouth about what he's running. And that that's what I stand for. That's what this whole channel is about. What the previous channel was about. Um, so you know, hopefully we can continue to do that and, and bring guys at our level stuff that they can use. You know, and that's, and that's basically what, what the whole thing's about. So yeah. still in, you're still in your two by two, coach. Now, yep. we've talked about it a little bit before, but this is predominantly a two by two formation, right? Uh, yeah, so our, our base our base was two by two. So. And then you're bringing the height across. Get inside down, coach. Yeah, it's just uh, what we call grind. So you're just inside zone to the right. So we just want the back. And the reason we're kind of running the motion off here is. A, they've just seen the motion the other way. So I want them thinking some kind of pass. But also now you go to a second motion on back-to-back -back plays and look how the defense reacts. You know, and also, not only that, but you're building for other things later on, aren't you? So, you know, yep. you, you, could, you could come back to that later on and fight that inside zone and, and so it'll and so be a, a screen pass. So you are literally building your lives now as you go along. You're literally setting up what you're going to do farther on down the line, so to speak. Yeah, and um, that might not even be this game. It might be a case of yeah. I want I want to leave something in the pocket for the next game. Yeah. Um, and, you, and so so when your opponents get the film and they go well, they all bit this way and they they don't run it and they all bit this way and they run a screen and all of a sudden they get you get the game there and you do something completely different from that orbit. So you know, yeah. you're keeping not, stuff stuff in your back pocket, isn't it? Yeah, and I was always a component of if you could get away with something, then kind of create your own tendency. Right, I like that. So just that, just that right. So. If we if we're going to run that motion, let's only run the one pass play off it for this game because we can get away with it. And then actually now let's break that tendency in the next game. So now the defense thinks whenever we see this motion, we're either getting inside zone or slants. Actually, there's another five concepts that I can run off the back of that, right? But, so I also like kind of creating my own tendencies through the season as people build that scout report on you. Yeah, I mean, you see now how the defense has reacted. It's caused like five different defenders to react. Yep. Watch back again. We don't do the best job up front here. We get a we get decent push. I think we pick up like three or four yards on it. But yeah, four yards of pop chance. That's, that's pretty good. That's all I asked, to be honest. These guys, these guys are stepping out. These guys, these guys are all looking for that, for that, uh, for that motion. Yeah. Excellent Which essentially, and what the tackle shouldn't be doing here. So the the right tackle shouldn't be chasing him around in the box. He should be going up to the next level. Yeah. Um, but what that motion has essentially done is taken the D end out of the play, because he's so worried now about the potential of that pop pass. But again, coach, it's coach, it's coach, it's a, a coach you'd build for you later on down the line. This is only game three, I think, in 2019. So. Both yeah. teams are still really, really new and raw. So, you know, they were still working on, on what they needed to do at the time. So, you, you, you can, it's a county point that you can bring up. Yeah, definitely. So, and the back we've got here was an ex lineman, believe it or not. So, he was still part way through his transition right. from lineman to running back. So, what we'd like to do here is obviously hit the, the right side A gap a little bit faster. But as the as they bump over, the linebackers actually bump over into a better double team position for that kind of takeover block. Because as they as they line up initially, they're not 
in a great alignment for us to go and get that inside zone track. Actually, the motion pulls them over into a better track for us. We just don't do a great job of blocking it. That's, that's rep, rep scout. You know? You're not going to get the best ever yet, but for me, if you get in three, four yards pop, then that's a win. And they're making yeah. running backs making six people tackling, so that's a win for me. Yeah. And again, the H I'd want as soon as you snap the ball to be going faster than that. It's very much a jog through on that, but. Right. Okay, can, if anybody's exactly what we're looking at, again, this is like five plays later. So we are still, um, you know, within the same series, the same the same, the same drive, and we're still using the orbit motion. Orbit in the H again. And this time we're just going to the H. Yeah. So, so in this situation, Coach, is this, is this a direct path to the H? And that's it, always, always, what's the, the QB's key read on this one? So this one, he would have just been, so we have, we have like a key read, which would yeah. be the apex defender. Right. So at the moment, he would be pre-snap read. So if we can pause it there for a second. So as we, if we can roll it back a little bit. So as we line up in terms of the, the QB's mentality, he knows he's, He's got inside shade on the Z. Right. So yeah. at this point, he's thinking man. So the guy closest to the right-hand side of the screen is kind of staring at the receiver. He's inside shade. So we know we've got man coverage here. So we're going to get that run off. What is potentially a safety or an outside linebacker or a nickel back covering our Y here? He's kind of like seven yards off. And then the next defender to defend is obviously the, the inside backer. So pre-snap here, he's going to go, I've got man coverage. Number two's got high leverage. We can just get into the flat and make some yards. So, so now, in three plays, you've ran, um, you've ran a Z, a Z orbit with a, a double slant, you've run a H orbit with an inside zone, and then you've run a H orbit uh, flash, whatever, whatever you call that path to the, to the, uh, to the, the motion going. And that that's a bad play call on my part, to be fair, because because the outside, the corner is in a fairly tight man here. The concept that I've called is not great. So we've run an inside, an inside breaking route. And in theory, we should have taken him deeper to get that. I found, uh, if it was me on this, I'd be, I'd be running stick, man. But I was, I was stick all the time, coach. If I get that press there, I'm really sticking his off. I'm out and stick on this. Sticks in my playbook. I know well and truly. It's in everybody's, it's in everybody's coach. <laughs> But at the end of the day, if the Elon gets his hand off and you're still picking up three or four yards, so you know there's there's a for me that's a that's a tick in the box of a win for me. I don't know how you, I don't know how you grade it out or, or how you win it. But if you're if you're getting four yards a pop, for me that's a that's a that's a W. For me, yeah, I mean, for me, Elon got his hand off. When we definitely in terms of a play, I mean when you look at the situation and when we go out of bounds, we we're, we're still kind of in a and and long situation. So if you look at the down markers, so we've obviously had some kind of fumble or sack at that point. So yeah, there's a big sack earlier on, a big fumble yeah. earlier on, bad snap. Yeah. So like, but my theory is, and I think where a lot of people struggle is they think that they need to get that back in one play. One play, yeah. Um, and I'm very much of let's stick to that four yards, four yards, four yards, and let something oh. explosive happen. Then we'll move on. So in the three clips so far, as I've already pointed out, we've seen um. Three different things. Which is, that's three plays now, complementing each other off of off of one simple motion, which anybody, any level can apply. 
if they already run in third down or run out third down, if they already run double slant or run a slant, they can apply this to their offense. In my opinion, you know, if you're looking for that cheap install, that's going to give you legs down the line, regardless of the level you couch at, whether it's uni or D2 or up to Prem. You know, it's, it's, it's a simple teaching. And all it takes, all, it's not, all it takes is reps, coach. Just reps. You gotta yep. you gotta detect practice time and just rep it and rep it and rep it. If you do that, it'll give you legs, right? That's that's kind of like what we what we try to do in this country. The stuff that'll yep. give us legs. And it's an attitude thing as well. You you guys have got to just enjoy being a part of the offense. So you know, the guys that are running the motion here know that they're probably gonna get the ball one in seven, one in eight times they motion. But they're still happy to do that because they know they're playing their part to get other people open. So it's it's part of that kind of unselfish culture as well. Right now, just just in that two by two again. You're motioning your Z. Yep. So again, we just kind of done that casual. He's a bit casual after the snap on that one, but he kind of knows he's going backside. So that's I think that's why. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're just going to run, we're going to run our zoom here. So our Z orbit, um, we run our zoom into our outside zone, right? One of the unique things that I, I, I did, I've, I've always liked from you is that you run that outside zone beyond, beyond your view. It's a bit different. I've not seen it all in several days. Yeah. I mean, again, it's just that kind of, when you look back at Oregon film, a few a few years ago when they used to change their running back alignment based on whether they were coming downhill or whether they're running outside. I didn't feel like we had enough advantage to be able to do that and not tip off the defense that actually, if he's lined closer to the QB, now he's running outside rather than inside. So, and the one thing that I always got annoyed at in terms of running stretch with the conventional running back coming in front of the quarterback was that the backside guy could always make a play on it. So my aim on going outside the quarterback was to make sure that two of the down linemen, if it's in a forefront like this, so I want the backside end and tackle to not be a factor in this play. Um, and the, if we're going in front, then you can only really eliminate one of those. But by going behind, what I want to try and do is use, certainly in Raf's case where he's got speed, to use that speed to know we're actually only defend. They can only defend with half of the D line. And you would you would you would run this outside zone stretch play without without the motion, and you still you still run it the same way. I I mean I have seconds to it. You would still run the, that that run about the same way on the outside zone, regardless of the of the jet of the jet being there or not. So you know it just it all it all connects together. You know in one big melting pot. And then again, this is one of the things where they've got used to us either passing or coming inside run. Yeah. So now you see the corner's gone inside and he's got, he has no kind of interest in thinking about run plays. Watch it back one more time. This is, this is, this is a great example. I knew that once I'd, once I'd done a little bit of a edit though, that I could, I could build this up to show people. This is a great example of just complementing your own offense by adding a little wrinkle in. You know, it's you already run this play, you already run this play, you already run the double stand, you already run the um the outside zone. You just add that wrinkle into it by making them think and if you keep adding it on into different things and different different avenues, you know, there's, there's so much you can do and I just I just love that aspect of offense and, and the simplicity of offense for us in this country. You know, we we can't be we can't have 45 plays and we can't have 75 formations. What you can do is add some legs to your offense, boy. Just a simple, a simple motion, you know what I mean? I, 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 yeah. I just love it. And that's why, that's why we built this off tags. So we could run this motion on, off every, every one of our plays in the playbook. Yeah. Yeah. So whatever the formations we call the zoom and then, you know, some plays worked better than others conceptually. Yeah. But if we liked some, if we liked having the Y singled up on a corner or we want a corner route into that side, we can run the Z motion away and leave that one-on-one -on -one to the corner route. Yeah. Um, so while it didn't have to work to the three the three side. Because once you once you roll you've got that, you know, you've got that one on one. Like I said, if you want to if you want to you want to run a right corner there, that's set up perfectly. 
if you wanted to. As you say, if you, if you run wide corner, you set yourself up there to run it perfectly. And then if, if you look at that now, so you've got three, this is the reason I run the behind the back or behind the QB stretch is that you can now see the three the three linemen in the backfield who haven't got a hope of chasing this down there. So now I haven't got, I've got three guys that I don't need to worry about. Now I've got four guys, well, five guys blocking four, essentially. Very good. Very good. They're not doing a great job of blocking it, but well, we've all got our our, uh, our problems, coach, and I'm sure your your guys were much. Um, but I had a great group, to be fair. Yeah, but you know, when you I when you're grading it on film, it's just uh, yeah. So I'm talking about after the snap, we'd want him to just kind of stress that sideline on the yeah. other side, just to keep the corner or the safety away. But, you know, the reason why you do that because there's, there's a clip later on where he gets that ball. And he runs a lot faster because he knows he's getting that ball. So, you know, for me, that will be a tip-off. But, I mean, it's like, it's, it's you need some kind of film nerd to watch that and, and, and have that. Like Stuart Andrews, he'd be the one to tip that off. He's, he's that kind of film nerd. But, again, so I know you've got four different, four different um, wrinkles to your offense. We're moving on. And there's probably way more. You probably, you probably ran way more than this couch. But as I said, I only broke down the two games that, that we had. Uh, I know that there's, there's games on YouTube. If you ever want to go ahead and watch them, if you were in the playoffs and stuff, then again, you know, so there's still not there. If you want to take a deeper dive into it and see what you do, I'm sure that you do run more than the, the 67 players that we're actually showing today. You know, so I'm sure once you get into the latter part of the season, you, you do things uh, yep. more, more uh, effective and stuff. So, so again... Yeah, this is just a, a swing screen. So we just run the, the zoom into the into the swing screen. So the receivers are just going to block and the dump it off into the flat. He's a dedicated the, uh... Yeah. Yeah. So that's one. There's no thinking there for the QB. He just knows he knows he needs to get it out fast. As soon as the Z gears up, he now just needs to stress the sideline and make a cut. And that's what we take. We want to really like press the sideline on this. He needs to go a bit faster at the snap, really. And he's he's more of an athlete than because he shows in, him. In, in theory, coach, you know, you've never got two v two blocking, and that's what usually for us as coaches, you'd be drawing up everything this is going to work. And then the reality of life gets there, and once we're going to miss a block or we're going to miss a man, it doesn't go as far as you want it to. But when you draw it up conceptually, there's no reason why this can't this can't go a long, long way because if you're if you're, if you're two guys. Lock up their men, you know. You've got basically this backer chasing down you, you guy, you're going a uh, full speed, and that should be a win for you nine times out of ten. And that's the reason I want to stretch the sideline, is because I, what I want to do obviously, the safety comes down and nearly makes a play here. But in terms of my H here, if he turns up too early, he creates a problem in the block. Now, his, the H is positioning the block is terrible because I want him to go and capture it. I want him yeah. to take the air out of that and get to him as fast as he can. Yeah. Um, it's a high this block. That's all, that's all it is, really. Yeah, I mean, it's only because he stops his feet and sits down. Is he lucky? Is he lucky to look blocking sort of purpose, my savage man? So are you are you saying that he's um his guy's his backer? Is that what he's thinking? No, so it should be the man over him. Should be the man so over him. Yeah. So it's about, it's about a Simon. That's that's big ball in, the, in a nutshell, right? Yeah. You deal so, with it. Ideally, what we want to do is kind of outrun the outside linebacker, which we would have done in that case if we'd got the right man blocked up. I did, um, I don't know if you saw it, guys, but I did a, a video a couple of years ago with our, our shark concept where we had we literally had three receivers to the, to the right and we had our running back just running a, a, a screen exactly the same as that where he gets the ball and you literally rely on the three receivers. If they don't block it, it doesn't go on way. But if they do block it, then you want the score again to be play. And that's, yeah. that's, you know, that's just a case of, um, you know, putting the time in to make sure you receive the, uh, not just the blocking time, but a, a, how to attack a block. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, definitely. That's, that's a tough block for, for a receiver. That's a tough block. Yeah. And it's one of those things, that's why I want them to press the sideline, because I want I want the defender to only be able to go one way. What yeah. I don't want it to do is square him up and then the defender's got a two-way go. 
So if we right. stress the sideline, then the, the slot guy knows that you can just play that outside shoulder. Yeah. Once, he's, once he's sat it there, now he's dead. Yeah. So you, you lose that play theory, but on paper, that's a win for me. Yeah. It should work. It just hasn't worked because the execution wasn't there. I mean, you still got yards on it because you make it go and miss and you still have to up three yards. So, you know, I hate you with Greg that it was still Elon Gary run for me. So you still make three or four yards on it. It's also a safe throw. I mean, it might be cheap, cheap as the odds for QB as well. We know that looks stats. QBs love stats. But it's, it's, um, it's a cheap easy throw, right? Yeah. You know, what and it's, it's, it's one of those things where, like with we spread, you hear it all the time. Oh, you need a talented quarterback to to run like a two by two set, but you can you can do things like this with someone who's got very little in the way of arm strength. Yeah, one of the one of the things we struggle with early in the season is just getting them used to pressing the sideline and not turning up too early. So it's definitely a coaching point we went through a lot. Plus, it's great to get on film, isn't it? You know what I mean? Especially for us at our level, it's great to get to the film. Actually, you know what? We need to attack this better. You know, I like I like that when there's a, a clear thing you can get on film. I just I just like it. So we'll go back to start on this one. You can see you're still in two by two. It's, 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 uh, it's another Z Jeff. I can't remember what it's playing. Oh, yeah. It's incomplete on this one. So that's just the slants behind it again. This, this, is, a, this is a key read for the QB? Yeah. Well, he's take, because he's taking the, uh, the Jeff guy, he's going to throw it from basically replacing the grass. That's what I was talking about, replacing, replacing the grass. Yep. And he gets two guys getting with him on that, on that incident. And yep. That, and that's that's what's brilliant about it, right? That's the communication thing that I'm talking about. Yeah. There's no no defence in the world is going to put two guys on one person going in the jet motion. And we just, mis we just don't quite connect on it. Again. Very, very similar to how you read it, Mr. Davis, right? That guy going, yeah. yeah. It's Simple. just we just read the apex, so we just yeah. key read the yeah. apex guy, and if if he goes away, we'll just it's what we call the first it's window, it. so we'll just put it in the first window. Yeah, it's one read for our QB, right? It's one read for our QB. It doesn't matter whether he's a veteran or whether he's a rookie. It's that, it's that, if that guy goes, you throw it. If that guy stays, you throw it out. You know, it's yeah. literally it's dumbed down to its umpteen decibel. And that was the thing kind of I learned early on as a coach. I was fortunate enough to go out to Texas Tech and I was sat in their meeting rooms. And I, there's probably a hundred stories I can tell you about Mike Leach, to be fair. But <laughs> the, one thing, the one thing that always resonates me, with me is that he, would, he sat in his QB meeting room and he was like, right, tell me what you're looking at. And they, they gave him all kind of, you know, spiel. Uh, they're in a too high shell, blah, 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 blah. Play coverage that he's going to invert, and he's like, "No, stop bullshitting me. Just tell me what you're seeing." Yeah. And he's like, "Well, there's more defenders there than there. It's like, perfect. What did you go there for then?" And I think sometimes we overcomplicate stuff. And if people at that level can then just call out his QBs and say, "Stop talking nonsense. Just throw to the space," <laughs> then you're onto a winner. Um. When you when you do when you are restoring this this this, um, this motion coach, how much of your practice time do you, do you dedicate to it? Uh, is it like a is it a weekly thing, or do you just throw it out there on your on air periods and stuff? Is there is there, is there like a, a motion period or a, a zoom period or what what is how do you attack it in terms of practice? So if we're if we're running it in that practice, then we'll run it on air. We'll run it in inside run. We'll run it in Pascal. We'll run it in team. Um, we'll run it in situational periods. We literally just get live reps on it. And that's what the way we used to structure our practices is we would have our individual time first. So we'd kind of rep the, the motion part of it first. And then we'd do it on air. So then they start to build up from, I'm just running this to now they can see 
how it all combines into the, the plays. And now we're running that as part of our run game inside seven kind of run scale stuff. And how does that impact where the linebackers are moving to into our pass scale, even though defense hate you running motion in pass scale, but that then allows you to, to mess with them, make sure you've got that kind of passing concept down. So rather than just kind of segmented to we're having a motion period where the defense, like defenses always do and play practice hero. Um, we just literally, if we had it in, it was going in across that week. Yeah, right. Watch it, watch it all the time before we move on. We've got a couple more tips coach. And that's that's a good, that one's a good example of just tweaking their alignment. So Steve, our boy here, he kind of knows that he's going to get singled up. So he's just kind of a little bit wider than he would normally. And again, he's just got the hitch on that side just to give some more space. You would never come back to the right though, right? You would never come so back can, to the right on this play. Uh, I would. Um, would. Tris was Tris was very much somebody that liked the wide side of the field. So you could probably watch a hundred hours of Tris throwing and he'd probably throw into the short side of the field like once. Um technically the hitch is on there if you wanted to take it. But yeah. in the case of do you I mean I I don't know how you read this play, but it seems like a long time to get to that other side. Yeah. It was, unless you're doing a pre snap, you know. No, I mean this is literally he knows what he's gonna get based on the motion. So we know yeah. if that they're in if, if we motion that away, he knows he's going to get singled up on the yep. on the Y. Um, I think the risky thing is, in, so from a quarterback perspective, the risky thing is you know you've got it singled up and it's fairly tight. So it's more, it's just a more confident throw going to the the width of the field because you've got more space. Right. Doing the red zone uh, now. Let's look at the first thing. the red zone. I'll take it down. The red zone just. Well, you can see in you can see in this in this clip, coach. You are you're in more of a condensed set. Or yeah. So this. Or you slot the tighter, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So this is what we call tight wire. So we just had Y come down into a conventional tight end set, and then our H would go across the formation into a wing back style. You would you would just use it as a, as a foul tight end. You would you would actually be you're bringing a tight end for this set. You just you just use your, your Y in a in like a foul a foul tight end set. Yeah, basically because our Y here was one of our better receiver blockers. So we could bring a tight end in, but Steve was probably better standing up blocking someone than some of our linemen were. So. And then we've just got a seam, seam from the tight end. So he's just going to go straight up the field. We've got a quick out from our H at the wing back. Of course, this is a concept that you can still run without, without that motion. You know, yeah. that, it is just window dressing in this play. Which is, yeah. again, what, sort of a lot, a lot of that aspect of it where you're doing it just for the sake of doing it, but it, it's, giving them food, it's giving them food for thought, right? Yeah. All the time. So RX here is going to run an in route. So you should have a three step in, I think. Yeah. So essentially, we've got that kind of horizontal stretch on that side and a kind of more of a vertical stretch on the right side and it goes to that. He's running that he's running that zoo a lot faster than Dalton was. Yeah. That that bug me that word. I'm not gonna lie to you, coach. You can see that's just, just straight away he's open on the on this land. That's the beauty of having a You'd be like right, great ball. Right. But again, that's that's why I love putting it in against different formations as well. So if you look at this, as we bring the Z into the motions, we run the zoom motion. Yep. Now as the H runs that two step out, he's got the corner going with him and his linebacker. Yeah, you're right, you're right. So we've got okay. two people going with that quick out, which is going to leave that Y 
screaming open straight down the seam. Right, you're right, coach. So, so, so the actual the actual zoom is is actually effective in this, in this situation. It is yeah. it is window dressing, but it actually plays a big part in what's going on because they're in man. So of course they're going to pass him off. So he put he pulls this safely away, and as you said, these two, these two guys both take the same man. We spoke about it at the start of the, start of the uh, video, coach, about you know making defenses think on the fly, and, and you know that could be wrong a lot of times. This is just a great example of it because both of those two guys shouldn't go without that that flat. And you can you can see him there. The Titans just going a little, probably a tad late on the throw. Could probably been a little bit earlier, just so it's not so tight to get into that window. You probably can't believe it's so open, to be honest, coach. <laughs> Let's take a sec, a second look at of close. It's wide open, and that's that's Al. Al Al's, Al's a good player, so you know he reacts pretty yeah. fast. But uh, that's a great throw. Actually, really well, really well designed. Simple but effective. And this is one of the things where you. I mean, from my experience in brick ball, I haven't seen people run a lot of motion down in red zone or tight, like short yardage situations. You're right. You're right. And I think you can actually get some good communication mishaps or good leverage by using it. But that will be that will be um, something to dive into into your own you know, film to be able to actually use it as well. I like using a ton. Yeah, I use it. I use it. I use a ton of it in general, but not when we get to the point where I just want to be aggressive. You know? Yeah. I mean, we use motion and we used a ton of shift down in the red zone. We have got two left Back to um, an inside zone. Four snap, but I think the keeper does a great job of saving that. I think this was, a, this was, was, was going to be a run play no matter what, coach. I think this was going to be an inside zone no matter what. Yeah, probably. I mean, what we've got on this, so this was our inside zone, so we do have the option to throw the swing on this. It's it's an RPO, essentially. Um, Obviously, with a snap like that, you're never going to get into the RPO, no. so it's going to be a handoff. I, I, was, I had a different because I, I just thought, well, because it's, it's showing the motion again, it doesn't look at the uh, inside zone you board around once before, it's in the, from the better angle of it. Yeah. The poor snap, but the keeper is a great job of saving it. It's a good job of that for the running back, and he makes them four, four and a half yards. But you can't really come and, and again, it's more just to see how it holds the linebackers. Um, so if we can. If we can either create movement or communication errors. Have you ever especially, thought, have you ever thought especially about someone like Al, who's one of the smarter players yeah. around, like if you can start to get him second guessing himself and he's a step slower, you kind of take one of his advantages away. Sorry, coach, what were you going to say? I was going to say, would you, have you ever been tempted or have you ever tried, you know, in terms of switching up? Who's running off the line? Then you would get like a an extra uh, and a height bubble rather than uh, yet yeah, rather than a height you as you say. Have you ever tried that, or was that too much learning? Do you think? I've I've played around with it in terms of like in the same offense, kind of moving people on and off the line. Yeah. I'm not a big proponent of that purely because I think you then start to slow them down mentally. So what I wanted them to do is know 100% that if I'm an X, I'm on the line. If I'm a Y, I'm on the line. If I'm H or Z, I'm off. And then mentally, that isn't even a factor anymore. It's just about where do I need to put my foot. Um, I coach it down way, coach. I'm, I, I'm a X and H, uh, X and Y down the line. That's how, I've, that's how I was taught. That's how I've always been. You know, I've never thought about moving them on and off in games because of that. I have the the the, the dread that they're gonna get it wrong and you're gonna get you're gonna make a play it's gonna be you're gonna be flags but not being on the line and stuff so yeah, yeah. especially at our level i don't like to give people too much too much but not only i mean not only that but the offense like certainly my offense is largely built around the h so i can move that h into a wing back i can move him to the side of the field i can put him into an up back i can put him into a pro set i can split him out to be a third receiver 
Um, now, what I like to do is try and find personnel that can be that Swiss Army knife. So Mac here is brilliant because he's somebody that can run a route. He can block. He can pass. Like we've got a H-back pass off this same kind of H-orbit motion that we ran against Shropshire, I think, in the either on the next next game or the next year. Um, so if I can take part of his thinking away and where he's starting to line up is just automatic, then we can start like some of the, the more complex stuff into where he's moving to post snap or in the shifts and things like that. That's where the mental can be focused rather than am I on the line this play? It's just the way I've always done it. Talk about it two or three times there, coach, but if you're running in third down already, it's just a nice little addition. And you've, you've already seen examples of that. If you, if you keep doing it, the defense will pull. It has to honor it. Same with if you're running the jet. You keep running it, they have to honor it. No matter what happens, because if they don't, and you hand it off or you, or you go that way, you have the numbers, right? So they have to they have to uh, honor that, that motion all the time. I follow people of the day, coach. Um, again, with that in our know, famous two by two, base there. What I loved about this this play coach, this is this one, this is the one that I enjoy the most out of all of them, because you're still using that uh, outside zone handoff from the running back. But now it's just a handoff from the, the, the jet mountain back. It's literally a jet sweep for an orbit sweep. But I like the way you incorporate the outside zone handoff to that guy. I think that's really well thought of, really well designed. What we can what we can do with that, we can even put the running back onto like a fake, because with because the QB is doing a pivot to hand off, we can yeah. now fake like an inside zone and then run the outside stretch. Love that. Um, so we can kind of have that sort of, that traditional sort of purple look that you get from kind of pro back. Well, what this allows me to do is it, it allows me to use my H's, my Z's, my F's, and they can all, rather than remotion, they can line up and run this play. So now I've got three different guys who can run stretch. So should my F go down for a game, I can now swap out a receiver and now I can put one of these guys in who's experienced at running this outside zone and it hasn't killed my game plan now. I've got somebody else that can run it. Uh, real design and a really good addition to the whole of the it's some of the videos but that's this this, this encapsulates everything that I've talked about from the start what we're trying to get with complimentary plays for the motion this is this voice this is voice my favorite and voice last because I just love this is that. this is great patient running as well he's just letting the blocks happen and then realizing he needs to outpace the blocks which is great um, I mean, certainly for this outside zone stuff, that that kind of turn and run is very alien to linemen generally. Yeah. So we used to rep it and rep it and rep it to just kind of kind of take that pivot step and run your track. Um, and you'll see them almost want to gear down as they start going through that. And it's just kind of having to coach them, coach them and coach them that running is the right thing, which is always going to be a problem with linemen. Uh, coach, that's it. Uh, nine clips. Have you got? Have you doing your thing? I, I appreciate everything you've done, Coach. Uh, thanks for taking the time to um, jump on board and talk us through what you do. Uh, it's been fantastic inside knowledge for us. Um, so uh, thanks for taking the time, Coach. Thank you very much. Anytime. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you. I'll see you again, Coach. Take care. Take care.